Yep. And plugging in. Welcome to the campus of Bayside High School, where tonight we've got an outstanding softball game for you. We've got the Bayside Bears, our first trip to Bayside High School. I'm pretty excited about it. What I'm even more excited about is that camera angle. You're going to be able to watch this game from tonight. We are right behind the on-deck circle of the Bayside Bears as the Bears get set to take on the Rock Ledge Raiders here tonight. And uh, we got a doozy of a softball game, no doubt about it. Sid Palmer in the circle for Bayside tonight and Kyla Berry in the circle for Rockledge tonight. Uh, now, because of our signal issues, we will not be able to use our normal app and where you'll see balls and strikes and runners on base. So you're going to have to rely on me for that tonight. But I'll, I promise I'll do my best as we get set for uh, the National Anthem coming up in a couple of minutes. But I uh, want to take this opportunity to go through the starting lineups for the Rockledge Raiders leading off and playing left field. Going to be number 20, Addie Berry. Batting second and wearing the number. Hang on for here. I can't read the writing. All right, now I'm ready. All right, Addie Berry leading off, playing left field. She wears number 20, batting second, playing center field. She wears number 13, Daphne. Daphne Aravina, and batting third, and she is the shortstop, is number 76, Lauren Garvey, batting fourth and in the circle. Number 15, Kyla Berry, batting fifth, and she is the designated player tonight. She wears the number 22. She is Lauren Scharfenberg, batting sixth, wearing number 24, does an outstanding job behind the plate, Matty Navarro, batting seventh, playing the hot corner over there at third base, going to be Kaylee Bow. She wears number seven, batting eighth, and playing right field. She wears the number three, Erica Perez, and batting ninth, and playing first base, number 42, Brielle Nelson, and uh, over at second base is going to be Jenna Garza, and uh, as we said, in the circle, Kyla Berry for the Bayside Bears, leading off and playing second base, number 17, Karis Platt, batting second, playing right field, number four, Brooke Lemke batting third and wearing number six playing third base is going to be Brooke Mahaney batting fourth and playing first base wearing number 22 Amante Johnson batting fifth and in the circle tonight wearing number 19 will be Sid Palmer batting sixth and Palmer's battery mate behind the plate is number one Allie Walter batting seventh and she wears the number three the left fielder Christina Van Cleve Batting eighth and playing center field, number 16, Isabella Raimondi. And batting ninth and playing shortstop, Emily Gary. Very uh, excited to be here. Bob Rahal, the skipper for the Bayside Bears. Coach Rahal, an extensive softball and baseball career. I believe this is his eighth season here at Bayside. 92 career victories for the Bears and for Scott Thomas, his third season with the Rockledge Raiders. And, of course, Coach Thomas has done an outstanding job. He's already made a Final Four. Thomas is 40 and 15 in three years. Uh, Coach Rahal, 92, 73, and 1. Uh, Coach Rahal's career goes all the way back to American Legion Baseball down in Miami back in 1992. So uh, he knows a thing or two about the sport of baseball and softball as we get set for the National Anthem.
All right, we're set for action here at Bayside High School. Alan Slaughter, Zinsky, Caleb Brown with you here on the Brevard Sports Network. Your first three batters are going to be Addie, Barry, Daphne, Aravina, and Lauren Garvey. Uh, for the Rockledge Raiders, the leading hitter this season is Emily Thomas, the junior. Uh, she's batting 517 for her dad, Coach Thomas. And uh, you got Lauren Garvey behind her at 440. Maddie Navarro at a 438. Addie Barry, who's going to be leading off, will step in the box batting three. 89. Let's tell you a little bit about Sid Palmer in the circle for Bayside tonight. Palmer comes in with a 5-2 and two record with a 1.44 ERA. She's got one complete game, one shutout, one no-hitter. Uh, that was earlier this season. In 34 innings pitched, she's allowed 15 hits, 10 runs, 7 earned, 9 base on ball, 61 strikeouts in 34 innings pitched. Opponents are batting just 120 against her as Addie Berry, Steps in the box, and we are underway here on the Brevard Sports Network. And there you see the shortstop and the second baseman. Uh, I, I don't think they could they could be closer, but definitely preparing for the bunt from the freshman, Barry. Rocks, kicks, and that ball is fouled off. And I can already see Caleb's going to get killed tonight. And uh, it's all right, Caleb. We have insurance. I just want to let you know, medically speaking, we'll get you taken care of after the game. The 0-1, and that hits her in the helmet, thank goodness, for face mask. And Addie Berry will take off down to the first base, to down the first base line. And Barry is aboard. She shakes it off. I tell you, girls are tougher than boys. Make no mistake about it. I'd be on the ground. I'd be on the ground right now, writhing in pain. Second batter up is going to be Daphne Aravina. Here's the pitch. Aravina with a beautiful bunt. Nobody's there, but an outstanding play by first baseman Amani Johnson. Turned, didn't see anybody, and then just reached out and tagged Aravina. But Aravina does her job with the sacrifice, setting up the RBI opportunity for one Lauren Garvey. Garvey steps in on the year, batting 440. She's got eight RBIs. She is a right-handed hitter, which I know makes Caleb very happy. Palmer winds, kicks, fires, fouled, out of play, nothing and one. The runner at second is Barry. Nicole Poudrier says, go Raiders. Nothing and one to Garvey. Here's the pitch. Another beautiful bunt. And this time covering is the second baseman. Karis Platt with an outstanding job covering. And that's two outs. Now with an opportunity to help her cause is going to be pitcher Kyla Berry. Kyla in the, in the batter's box this year is batting where is she 222 and i tell you what palmer just wound up and threw pure smoke and it's o and one with two outs runner at third here ryan's kicks change up is uh barry was ready for it but way out in front and the count is quickly o and two to the junior sensation Coach Thomas. Here is the 0-2. Two outs. Top one. And that's a chopper to the second baseman. Nice job. One. After the uh, initial hit batter, it goes 1-2-3 then for Sid Palmer. No, no, uh, no walks. One hit batter. No runs. No errors. One left. We head to the bottom of one. Rockledge nothing. Bayside is coming to bat.
things I like because I have to. I, I, I just, I have to. You have to be in every pitch. You know what I mean? Are you okay? All right. I was just telling Caleb if you didn't hear me because we have no way to turn the microphone off tonight or none of that good stuff. So hot mic night all night here on Performance Sports Network. Uh, I'll be real careful. All right. So uh, here's uh, here's the thing I love about doing games in which I, I think I when when we when we do have games that the signal doesn't work or it's not a great signal and we can't use the app. Um, it keeps you in literally in every pitch. And I would never proclaim to be lazy at broadcasting, but there are times you do rely on the technology to help you through. But tonight, no such thing will occur. It's going to be Karis Platt, Brooke Lemke, and Brooke Mahaney for Bayside. Karis Platt, the leading hitter for Bayside this year, nine games played, is Lemke. She'd be the second batter. She's batting 667 and uh, three official at bats. Platt in 13 games played is batting 512. You got Palmer at 375, Mahaney at 371. Of course, what can you say that we already, well, what can you say about Kyla Berry that we haven't already said? But Barry is just outstanding in the circle. She's been that way her whole career. 441 career strikeouts. This year, she's 7-3 with a 1.51 ERA, 12 appearances. She started 11 games. She has eight complete games, one shutout. She's pitched 69 in the third inning, struck out 121. She is prone to giving up the long ball. She's given up six of them this year. So, stepping in. And leading off is going to be Karis Platt, the left-handed Platt in first pitch offering. Will be outside for ball one. One and O oh to Platt, who was looking to slap a bunt down the third baseline. Take you through the infield here. And coming up for Rockledge. Here comes the one O. Oh. That'll be a strike, one ball and one strike now to Platt. Of course, Barry in the circle, and behind the plate is Matty Navarro. Over at first is Brielle, Brielle Nelson. Pitch. That'll be a ball, two and one. Down at second base, Jenna Garza over at the hot corner. Kaylee Bowles and at shortstop, Lauren Garvey. Your outfielders and left field is going to be Addie Barry in center field. I'll tell you here in just a second. Well, actually, it's going to be Daphne Aravina, and over and right is Erica Perez. Here is the 2-1, and that ball is fouled off, and the count is now two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter, Karis Platt. Two and two. Interesting to see what Barry will throw here. Will she take something off? Winds, kicks, fires. She does not. She comes with the straight heat, and the count will remain at two balls and two strikes. Charles, I appreciate you. Always appreciate you. You have tuned in for a good one here tonight. Thanks for logging on. Two and two here. Bottom one, no score between the number two locally ranked Raiders and the number five locally ranked Bears. That will go high for ball three. So the count is full now to the leadoff hitter, and obviously as a leadoff hitter, it is your job to work the count and get on base. That is the key to being a good leadoff hitter. Three and two, Barry toes the rubber. She'll wind, fire. That ball is popped straight up, and Thomas calls for it, and she'll haul it in, and that'll be the first out of the inning. Both these teams, outstanding fielding teams. They couldn't be without their records. They are 14 and 4 for Rockledge, 9 and 4 for Bayside. And that's going to bring up Brooke Lemke. Lemke is a 667 hitter, left handed stick. She steps in. She's a freshman, just a freshman. 
That'll be a strike. Oh, and one to Lemke. Scoreboard says ball, but it was a strike. Barry fires, squares the bunt. That'll be high for a ball. So one ball now and one strike. One and one is the count. Tomorrow, all day, we'll be with you from Satellite High School for the Cape Coast Conference Track and Field Championships. Here's the pitch. That'll be a strike. Strike two. That'll be one ball and two strikes now. One ball and two strikes to Lemke. One out. Bottom one. No score between the Raiders and the Bears. Pitch. That'll be strike three. Two outs. And that'll bring up Brooke Mahaney. Mahaney steps in as a 371 batter. She's got 13 hits, six RBIs, four doubles. And she can hit it over the wall. She's got two dingers on the year. On deck is Amani. Johnson, first baseman, who had a good inning in the field. Pitch, strike one, and Barry in a rhythm. Oh, and one. Pitch, change up is a butte, Clark. And it's 0-2. There's the Christmas vacation reference early, Caleb. No balls, two strikes now to Lemke. Rocks, kicks, fires. That ball is smacked into center field, but an outstanding job there by the center fielder, Daphne Aravina, to haul it in for the third and final out. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We head to the top of two, no score. Bears Raiders. All right, we get set to head to the top of the second. Right behind us, one of these days, Caleb and I will actually put our heads together, come up with a way to figure it out. If the baseball and softball is going at the same time, why not have a doubleheader broadcast, right? Bayside playing Palm Bay in baseball. But we're set here for that ball lead off. Hitting is Schattenberger. And she hits one down the line foul. Lauren steps in this season. Scharfenberg, sorry. Scharfenberg batting 300. Here's the pitch. Just low. A ball and a strike now. One and one to the freshman. Sid Palmer fires just off the plate, and it'll be two balls and a strike. Palmer wearing the old Crocodile Dundee hat. I like it. Here is the two and one. Not sure where it missed, but it's three and one. And tonight I can say that because we are right here. We are not in the cheap seats tonight, Caleb Brown. Three and one. Here's the pitch. 
That ball is roped up the middle for a base hit. And Scharfenberg is aboard. And that's going to bring up number 24, Matty Navarro. Navarro steps in, batting 438 this year. Navarro's got 12 RBIs, two doubles, two triples, 21 hits in all in 48 official at-bats. Matty Navarro, Sid Palmer. Palmer fires. Navarro turns to bunt. She didn't pull it back. Strike one. Oh, and one to Navarro. This is going to be a good one. Palmer winds and fires high for a ball. One and one. Make sure you let me know who's watching tonight, Caleb. I know we got Nicole Poudrier, Charles Flowers. That's a strike. Right down I-95 with that one, and it's one and two. Who else? Kendall Clay, welcome. Here to the Brevard Sports Network tonight. Palmer fires, popped up, out of play. Count will remain at the ball and two strikes. Who? Kay Sherman. Kay Sherman. Welcome to Brevard Sports Network. If all of you would do me a favor, if you haven't already done it, hit the like page. Hit the like button for me. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And down on strikes goes Matty Navarro for the first out in the inning. That's going to bring up number seven, Kaylee Bowles, the third baseman. Kaylee comes in, batting 340. She's got seven RBIs, a double and a triple on the year. A right-handed stick to face the left-handed throwing Palmer. Sid rocks, fires, and there's a little grounder back to the pitcher. She looks second and takes the shore out at first. So now you have two outs in the inning with a runner at second and the batter is going to be Erica Perez. Perez, a 2-11 hitter this season. She's got three RBI. She, she, has, she has two doubles. Sophomore. She's got, she's tall, so she can get, she get her arms out, but she looks at strike one. So, But Sid comes right down the middle of the plate with heat on that one, and it's nothing and one. Palmer rocks, kicks, fires, and that's a check swing foul for strike two. Oh, and two now. And this is going to be a familiar theme all night with with uh, Palmer and uh, Barry in the circle. Get used to hearing oh, and two. Here's the pitch, and there's a grounder to the first baseman. Great stab. Outstanding play by Amani Johnson, who fields the position excellently. And there she stabs it, touches first for the third and final out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. We head to the bottom of the second inning. No score between the Bears and the Raiders. I'd like to welcome in again Kay Sherman watching from Wichita, Kansas. I tell you, I've got myself into a habit late at night. I have to, what's the word you look for? Decompress from sports at night. So I look for other things to watch. Well, I'm a weather buff. So I get into watching these tornado chasers. And I tell you what, I don't know how you all do it out there in the Midwest. I, 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 goodness gracious, I don't know how you do it. From Alabama to Kansas to Oklahoma and Texas, God bless you all. All right. Speaking of Amani Johnson, she's going to step in. We'll see if Amani's outstanding play in the field leads to a big hit at the plate. Johnson comes in batting 250 this year. And Kyla Berry rocks, kicks, and fires. That's a strike. 
right down Palm Bay Boulevard. I'd like to welcome in Nisha Leverett watching, Liz Parson. On deck is Allie, or I'm sorry, on deck is Sid Palmer. That'll be strike two, oh and two. Outstanding camera angle tonight. Like to thank Coach Ray Hall and the Bayside Bears coaching staff for getting us set up so beautifully here. Pitch change up is high. Good job. Now I know that pitch looked well out of the strike zone, but it glided there. And Johnson did a good job of holding up on the swing. Good waste pitch by Barry. A ball and two strikes. pitch and she stays alive one and two bottom two no score this we, we thought this would be a pitcher's duel and it most certainly so far it looks to be that way Swing and a miss, and that'll be a strikeout, the third of the game for Barry. And that's one out. Sid Palmer steps in. Palmer's a 375 hitter. She's got uh, 12 hits and 13 RBIs, three doubles on the year. Palmer, a left-handed stick, stands the reason she's a left-handed pitcher. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one, and Barry is throwing BBs right now. Oh, and one, one out. There's a chopper. That's fair. Fair ball. They got to touch it. And that looks like a line drive in the book at the end of the night. And Sid Palmer is on with a one-out hit. A little, I wouldn't even say a dribbler, off the end of the bat, and it just stopped. And uh, it's an opportunity now for Bayside with a runner aboard. That's the first hit of the game. Not much you can do about it. It's going to bring up Allie Walter. Walter steps in, batting 250 this year. She's got 13 RBIs, nine hits, and 36 official at-bats. Jamika Burns says, go Lady Raiders. Sherry Williams says, Mamaw Sherry from Barefoot Bay. Go Sydney Palmer, Lefty Palmer. <laughs> Substitute pinch runner is Kayla Placeris. Sherry Williams says, go Bayside Bears. Pitch. That'll be high for ball one. So the pinch runner for the pitcher is Kayla Placeris. So it's one and O. Oh. The one O. Oh. Low and inside. Make it two and O oh to Allie Walter. On deck. Christine. Christina Van Cleve is on deck. Barry fires high and 3-0. and oh. Here's the interesting part of the game right here. I've seen Kyla Barry go 3-0 and oh to hitters. See if she battles back because we've seen her do it time after time after time after time. See if she battles back here. And if you are Allie Walter, you're taking two. You've got to be taking two here. And she does not. Question is answered early, and that's a four-pitch walk. And the Bears got a little something-something brewing here in the bottom of the second inning with just one out. And at the plate, Christina Van Cleve. Van Cleve, a 270 hitter. She's got six RBIs, 10 hits, and 37 official at-bats. like to welcome in Jose Valcourt. You'll recognize the Valcourt name. 
upstairs for a ball. Sophia Valcourt, of course, our one of our Beachway Volleyball players of the game the other night for the Melbourne Bulldogs. They beat Liberty 9-3. Melbourne, the number one ranked, locally ranked softball team. Rockledge 2, Vieira 3. Bayside, I think, was 5th. 4th or 5th in that. But an opportunity here nonetheless. Space Coast got a big win over Bayside uh, Tuesday night. It's the pitch. That'll be a strike. One and two. Nearly got her there. One and two now. And Barry, after a four-pitch walk, is ahead of Van Cleve. One and two. On deck is Isabella Vermundi. Here's the pitch from Barry. High. That'll even the count at two balls and two strikes. Charles Flower says the sun is out because it is. It is. What did Ernie Banks used to say, Charles? Let's play two. It's a beautiful day. Let's play two. Barry, 2-2. Two, two. Inside at the knees and the count goes full. And Kylie doesn't like the strike zone at the moment. Three and two now. Pitch. Fouled out of play. Good job by Van Cleve to stay alive. And the count will stay full. Runners not going on that pitch, but there is only one out, so... You wouldn't expect to see them moving just yet. Although, on a 3-2 count, I would, you would like to see them lean a little bit further. Can they count? I don't think they can leave till the ball leaves the hand of the pitcher. And there, that time, that's a strikeout. That's a big strikeout by Kyla Berry for the second out of the inning. And that's going to bring up Isabella Ramundi. Ramundi steps in, a 226 hitter. She's got four RBIs and two doubles. A double here would be huge for Bayside. Runners at first and second, two outs now in the inning. Here's the pitch. Nothing and one. That one straight down Malabar Road for strike one. Two outs. Bottom two, no score between the Raiders and the Bears. Again, Low signal area here in Brevard County, so we aren't able to use our scoreboard app. Swing and a miss, and Barry battling back as we thought she would here in this inning. But i got to give Bayside credit. They're not standing there looking at them. They are aggressive at the plate, and eventually that'll pay off. 0-2, oh, two, two outs now. Barry looking to get out of the inning with runners at first and second. She just, just missed doing that. And the count is one and two. I'd like to welcome in Manny Larice watching here on the Brevard Sports Network. One and two, two outs. Bottom two. Again, we apologize. We aren't able to get the scoreboard app up for you. That's strike three. And that will end the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. We head to the top of the third. No score between the Bears and the Raiders. Can't get much better than that. Hold on. 
Okay. Yeah, that's it right there. Got it. That's the shot. Because I'll say, because you know, here, I don't have to move it up and down to follow the play. Either. Yeah, that's that's the shot. Got it. Thank you. All right, adjusting the camera a little bit. Due up for the Rockledge Raiders is going to be Brielle Nelson, Jenna Garza, and Addie Berry here in the top of the third. No score between two of the top five teams in Brevard County. Of course, the number two locally ranked Rockledge Raiders committed 14 and 4. I'd like to welcome in Wanda Krieski watching here on the Brevard Sports Network. Welcome, Miss Wanda. Please tell Mr. Eddie we said hello. And, of course, the boys, as always. It's about this time last year we sat down with the Krieski family. Got an opportunity to get to know them a little bit. I'm also pleased to announce this, by the way. We have some Rockledge faithful on here coming up. Hang on. First pitch swinging. Strike one. Had an opportunity last week to sit down face-to-face -face and talk to Rockledge Raider Athletic Director Greg Claiborne. Coach Claiborne and I have uh, spoken I've apologized to Coach Claiborne directly, and uh, starting in the fall, we will be returning to the campus of Rockledge High School to broadcast Rockledge Raider Sports. Oh, and two, and there's a chopper to the second baseman, up and over to first, and that'll be one out here in the top of the third inning. So nothing makes me happier than that. It was... Uh, it was good to sit down with Coach Claiborne again. And to be honest with you, we spent most of our conversation just talking about baseball. Few know it more than, than Coach Claiborne does. And that'll be strike one as we are back to the top of the lineup. That's right, I forgot. Jenna Garza is hit batted for. Here's the pitch to Addie Barry. Barry is has been hit by a pitch. She got hit right in the brim of her helmet. One ball and one strike, one out, top three, no score. Pitch, swing, and a miss. Strike two. And I'll tell you what, Sid Palmer is throwing heat. Straight fire right now. Make it strike three. My goodness gracious, two outs. And that'll bring up the second hitter in the lineup, Daphne Aravina. Aravina grounded out her first time up. Pitch, that's a pop-up. And, you know, there's no doubt Amani Johnson was going to get to that one. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. That's about how you like your innings to work. If you're Coach Ray Hall there, Sid Palmer sets them down in order. We head to the bottom of the third. No score between the Raiders and the Bears. All right, we get set to start the bottom of the third inning, and leading off is going to be Emily Gary. Gary steps in at point fifty this year, but look, uh, she, she's going to get off the schneid here. Here's the pitch from Barry to Gary. You say it ten times. 
And that'll be a ball high on deck. Back to the top of the lineup with Karis Platt. Pitch. That one's right down the middle. A ball and a strike now. No score. Bottom three. Moving right along. And that right there will stop that from happening. That's called jinxing the time of the game. Usually it's Caleb that does it. And we get into a tremendous argument on the way home about... You know, things we should say during the broadcast and things we shouldn't. And one of them we should never say is that the game is moving right along. Because inevitably, every time you do bring it up, it then takes three hours to play from that point on. So we'll see. But I doubt it with the way that Palmer and Barry are pitching. A ball and two strikes now to Gary. Barry winds, rocks, fires, strike three, one out. That is the fourth strikeout of the night for Kyla Barry. And back to the top of the lineup we go with Karis Platt. Platt, first offering, squares the bunt, popped up. And that comes right into your living room. And it's nothing and one. Carries the lead off hitter, adjusts the elbow. I, mean, I don't blame, I, you know what, with these two pitching, I'd have all kinds of pads on. I'm not saying they're wild. I'm just saying if one gets away, it's going to hurt. Nothing and one to Karras. Barry toes the rubber. Fires. Off-speed pitches, low and outside. One ball, one strike. It'll be high for ball two. And, again, we want to just thank Bayside because this camera angle will be here every game now. I mean, they're not gonna, matter of fact, Caleb's moving here. He's going to pitch a tent. We're not leaving. We're not leaving. Here is the 2-1. I'll pick – all I got to do is bring Caleb some food and water. He'll be all right. The pitch, that ball is popped straight up. Thomas calls for it, and she hauls it in for the second out of the inning. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. Uh, again, you know, not, and look, you know, you know the old Seinfeld expression, not that there's anything wrong with shooting through a fence or a screen. It's just that it drives me nuts. When I'm watching a game, I do not like to look at chain link fences and nets and things like that. So we have done our best to ensure that that doesn't happen here. And today we were setting up down the uh, down the outfield line, and coach came over and said, "How'd you like to be in the on deck circle?" And we said, "How about it?" <laughs> Here is the pitch, and it'll be high and outside for a ball one and zero. Oh. Like to welcome in Benita Holland watching here on the Brevard Sports Network. Speaking of athletic directors, one of the best to ever grace the county. One and zero. Oh. That'll be a strike. That's a butte right there. And the count will move to one ball and one strike. If you're just joining us again, this is a low signal frequency area in Brevard County. So we aren't able to run all of our applications. And that includes the scoreboard app and our bottom banners. I know you're upset we can't run our bottom banners. <laughs> That'll be strike two on the swing. The batter is Brooke Lemke. On deck is Brooke Mahaney. One and two now, two outs, and then a vastly different inning for Barry than the, bo or the bottom of the second. Here's the pitch. That'll be strike three, and that will end the inning, and Barry sets down the Bears in order. So we head to the top of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and yet still no score between these two battling it out here at Bayside High School. No score. Nothing, nothing, Bears, Raiders.
All right, we head to the top of the fourth inning. Raiders coming up to bat. Number 76 for the Raiders. Takes it, ball one. Pitch. One just missed, ball two. Tips that one off. Scoreboard says one and two. That ball is slapped foul. Tried to do my best Caleb Brown impression there, but it didn't work. Thank you, Caleb, for had to run over and grab a drink. Lauren Garvey. Pitch. Garvey pops it up. Backspin, though. That definitely has to be a two-handed catch, and that'll be the first out of the inning. i tell you what. I could foresee this thing going on all night as long as these two can keep doing battle in the circle like this. That's going to bring up number 15, Kyla Berry, the pitcher. She could definitely help herself here. One out. Berry with a shot to the shortstop. Backhanded bobbles. Throws. Outstanding play. Just, and I mean just, miss getting her. Great play. Berry beats out the infield single. And the Raiders with a runner aboard. I tell you what, the little bobble from the glove to the, she had her. Great play, great play. Good hustle down the line by Kyla. And we get a pinch runner. I'll give you the number in just a second. And stepping in is Scharfenberg. And the freshman had the lone Rockledge hit until Kyla Berry just got that one. So a runner on with one out here in the top of the fourth for Scharfenberg. Sid Palmer winds and delivers. And I'll tell you what, I don't know how she got a bat on that because that was straight smoke. Nothing and one. Number six is the pinch runner for Rockledge. And that is, can't be six. And the pinch runner goes. It's five. They got her. Great execution. What a throw. What a tag. Great play by Allie Walter to Emily Gary. Tag applied, out made, two outs. You rarely see a play executed like that. Pitch. And that ball is grounded foul. And I'm going to tell you what. Here's the thing. What made that was Sid Palmer. And she's got a, such a fast delivery to the plate. She threw a fastball. It was perfect. And uh, psh, down the second base for the out by Walter. Great throw. I think that one slipped out of her hands. That'll be a ball, two balls and a strike now. What a play. You got that right, buddy? That's a den of that, den of that moment right there. Top four, no score, two outs now. Ball's popped up behind first base, second baseman giving chase. Had a shot at it, good hustle, but it'll fall. 7-0 in the baseball game, Bayside on top of Palm Bay behind us. That one heading for a 10-run rule. This one, uh, we may not have 10 hits combined. Scharfenberg, 0-2, two, two outs. Top four pitch. Change up is beautifully thrown by Palmer for the third strike and the third out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. This 
to me, has been the game of the year that we've done. No score between the Bears and the Raiders. All right, we get set for the bottom of inning number four and set to lead it off here. I tell you, it's going to be Brooke Mahaney, Amani Johnson, and Sid Palmer. So we'll see if Bayside, with the outstanding defense from behind the plate, can capitalize on the momentum here. Kyla Berry as well as Sid Palmer moving right along. Here's the pitch. That one is smoked into left field, but a nice track and hauled in by the left fielder for the first out of the inning. One pitch, one out. Addie Berry out there making sure that uh, nobody gets on for her sister. That was a good swing, good connection, but just got under it a little bit. You always like the first... Uh, the one pitch, one out thing, I tell you. So that'll bring up a Monty Johnson. And Monty, first pitch swing. A Monty has just been outstanding in the field tonight for Bayside. I would imagine all year as well. And uh, I tell you, I am impressed with the way she plays the game. Oh, and one from Barry. Here's the pitch. Change up, grounded to the third baseman, up and over to first for the second out of the inning. Good throw by Kaylee Bowles to get Johnson for the second out. That's going to bring up the pitcher, Sid Palmer. Palmer with an opportunity here, as Kyla Berry had, to help her cause in the circle. She was all smiles coming off. After that changeup she threw, pitch, and there's a chopper. Bows up and over, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, one, two, three, they go. We head to the top of the fifth inning already. No score between the Bears and the Raiders. All right, welcome back here, top five. Shouting across the field to Damea. Where's he been? Uh, uh, Boca Chica. Boca Chica. Are we sure that's where he is and not what he was saying? Okay. In the Jamaican Republic, okay. He's a huge Raiders fan. Rockledge Raiders fan. He comes to all the softball games. And here he is down here at Bayside. All right, stepping in. Leading off, number 24, Maddie Navarro. Navarro, a left-handed batter. Sid Palmer is just cruising along. Head, 
Heads up, Caleb. Pitch. That'll be a strike. And she continues. You know what I love about Sid? Watch her when she pitches. She She's smiling. She loves to play the game. Loves to play it. That's a chopper to the shortstop in that one. A tough, tough, tough hop there. No chance for the shortstop, and that'll be a leadoff single for the Raiders. That's going to bring up Kaylee Bowles. Now, it would be interesting to see if they try to steal another base here. Kaylee Bowles. Comes in batting, came into the game batting 340. She's a right-handed hitter. She's got seven RBIs, a double and a triple. Pitch, she squares the bunt, but it's foul for strike one. Oh, and one. Three hits for the Raiders, two for the Bears. No score for either team. Palmer, Kaylee, Kaylee with a nice bunt and only one shot here. Nice cover by the second baseman. And that'll be one out. Rockledge has done an outstanding job sacrificing their players from first to second tonight. But Sid Palmer has just cut it off there. Going to bring up Erica Perez. And that'll be strike one. Perez, a 2-11 hitter coming into the game. She's got three RBIs. One out here. Pitch. And that ball gets away. And easily down to third base goes Matty Navarro, so now keep your eye. Just one out here. It'll be interesting to see with a ball on a strike and one out if we try to see some sort of a bunt squeeze here type of a play. So keep your eyes on the runner at third. Hang on, Caleb. You got it? All right. Palmer. Wines kicks, and that's indeed what they were trying to do. So that'll be, he, they say she went. That'll be strike two. One ball and two strikes now. One and two. Let go. Pitch, and that ball is fouled off for. Keep the count. Scoreboard says two and two. I think it's one and two, but we'll see. Is it two and two? It is. Caleb corrects me. It is indeed two and two. Pitch. Change up. Not fooled by it was Perez, and the count is now full at three and two. So this is really the first time all game long that we've seen Palmer go to this situation. See how she battles. Palmer winds, kicks, fires. That goes off the bat. That's a strike. The count will remain full, three and two. Oh, this is an outstanding game. This is Charles Flowers. Outstanding. Pitch. Strike three called. Great location. And Nobody likes it. The umpires in the stands didn't like that one. And neither did the Raider coaching staff, but it is a called strike three, and that is the second out of the inning. That changes the entire situation now. And swing and a miss by Brielle Nelson, the first baseman.
Palmer, change up in the dirt. Good stop by the catcher. One ball, one strike. That ball is hit back to Palmer, who goes over to Amani Johnson. Score it one, three at home, but more importantly, that's the end of the inning. Runner left at third. No runs. One hit, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom of five. Still no score between the Bayside Bears and the Rockledge Raiders. We thought this would be a good game, and it has certainly turned. Why is my camera rocking? What's going on there? Was it just rocking, or was that just me? Man, I'm getting old. Look like it was. Oh, you know what it is? It's the screen moving back and forth. This thing right here. I'm like, what are you doing over there, Caleb? How are you even making that happen? Teach me, teach me. All right, we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. And outstanding job by Kyla Berry and Sid Palmer so far. Allie Walter, the catcher, steps in. And I'll tell you what, if you're looking for an MVP now of this one, that's a strike. If it's not the pitchers, it is most certainly Allie Walter. Allie Walter's done a great job back there behind the dish tonight. And that's nothing and one. Here's the pitch from Berry. And she chased, and it is 0-2. No balls, or I'm sorry, no ball. Yeah, no balls, two strikes. Pitch low, ball one, one and two. Now scoreboard keeps throwing me off. He says two and one, but it's one and two. Here's the pitch. Swing, caught, strike three. Thank you. <laughs> that is right there. Look, that's one, two. And that'll bring up. Nice job by Navarro to hang on to that foul tip. That's going to bring up Christina Van Cleve, the left fielder, with one out here in the bottom of the fifth pitch. That'll be strike one. Oh, and one to Van Cleve. On deck is Isabella Raimondi. The pitch. That ball is hit into center field. But easily there to haul it in is Daphne Aravina, and that's the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up Isabella Ramundi with Emily Gary on deck. Isabella Ramundi came into the game today, batting 226. Barry's first offering to her is right down Palm Bay Road, strike one. Oh, and one to Ramondi. Two outs. Just off the plate, and the count will even up at a ball and a strike. 
coming up tomorrow here on the Brevard Sports Network, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. Cape Coast Conference, track and field championships, all day coverage. Tomorrow night, it's lacrosse. Strike two if I'm not dead. Knock on wood, I don't mean like physically, you know. like See, I, I'm, I'm superstitious, so I don't even know why I say crazy stuff like that. Normally, that's Caleb that puts me in those predicaments. One and two to Ramundi. Just off the plate, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom five, no score. And the 2-2, strike three. That'll end the inning. And as easily as Sid Palmer's moseying along, so is Kyla Berry. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We head to the top of the sixth, and still no score between the Raiders and the Bears. All right, I tell you what, I, I don't know that we're going to have a winner in this one anytime soon with the way Palmer and Barry are going, but we're back to the top of the Rockledge lineup with Addie Barry, the freshman. Top six, no score here. The pitch, and Barry with a slapper over the third base, but to the shortstop throws, and Barry with an outstanding first pitch slapper, and she'll beat out an infield hit. And the Raiders have the leadoff hitter aboard. Yeah, this is perfect for my best Chris Berman impression, isn't it? It's going to bring up Daphne Aravina. The Baz and the Raiders. Palmer rocks, kicks, and that'll be strike one. And Addie Berry, I love base runners that just bury their head and run. And that's what Addie Berry was doing there. Nothing and one now to Aravina. So the Raiders, for the first time tonight, well, actually the second time, the Raiders have the leadoff person aboard. And if you look at statistics, statistically speaking, that leadoff runner scores between 65 and 70% of the time. And that'll be a ball. She got the bat back in time. Did Aravina one and one here. Nobody out. Addie Berry at first. Tension mounting here on the campus of Bayside High School between these two. If it's not mounting in the stands, it's mounting between Caleb and I. Here's the pitch. That'll be strike two. A ball and two strikes. Good pitch by Palmer. Good location. This would be a big strikeout here. Because then it limits the sacrifice. Coach Rich Brzezinski on first. Outside, that'll even account up at two balls and two strikes. Manager Scott Thomas, the third base coach. Coach Rich Brzezinski over at first. No score between these two top five Brevard County teams. Sid Palmer fires, and that ball is swung on, and Aravina just gets a piece of it to stay alive, and the count will remain at two and two. Not sure why the home plate umpire delivered the ball, but okay. Oh, the ball caught her on the inside. Gotcha. Thank you, Caleb. That foul tip caught her on the inside of the foot. 
I had that happen once where I fouled a ball off my shin. I had to go to the emergency room like in the middle of the night because it swelled up so bad. Here's the pitch. That's a pop-up. Amani Johnson just misses getting to that one. That was tough. That ball was kind of kind of a liner, kind of a looper, but was tailing away from Johnson. Tough play. The count stays two and two. Aravina battling, battling hard here. If you're Sid Palmer, I think you take this one. And I think you, I think you throw that change up here. It's the pitch. She goes fastball, but it's high. Three and two. The lid is tight on the pickle jar now for Palmer. Three and tight. Three and two. Addie Berry at first. Here's the pitch. Ball four. And the Raiders are in business with the runners at first and second. With nobody out and the heart of the lineup coming up. Lauren Garvey steps in. Garvey, a 440 hitter. She's got eight RBIs, two doubles, a triple, and a dinger on the year. Garvey, a right-handed stick. Palmer battles, fires, and that's a beautiful bunt. And that's going to have to go to first. And they're going to say she came off the bag, but they did. she did not. And that's going to be one out. Now you really have an option here. What do you do? I believe you're left with no choice but to put Kyla Berry aboard to load the bases. I think you absolutely have to load the bases here. I don't think there's any doubt you put a force on. They are checking. The umpires are checking with each other here. They may not have to put her aboard. They're going to say she's out. That's a good call. So one out, good sacrifice. Kyla Berry takes a timeout here, grabs the bat of her choice. Berry, they're going to put her on. That's a great call, great call by Coach Ray Hall. And so Kyla Berry, Kyla <laughs> Berry wanted to swing the bat. I don't blame her, but that's that's just an outstanding job by Coach Ray Hall to put her aboard, and that's going to bring up Lauren Scharfenberg. Berg has a hit in this game, and now you have a force in any base, and I, I think that's the right decision. Obviously, I do. I was preaching it before he did it. Cur courtesy runner is number 25 for, that's Autumn Charvet. Charvet in the run for Barry Palmer with one out pitch, and... I think that's a ball. It is outside for a ball. One and O. Oh. In order to make this work, she's got to throw strikes. I, I I just think you just throw strikes and let it loose. Pitch, and that's a chopper foul, and the count will go even at one ball and one strike. Coach Thomas telling Scharfenberg, you can use the whole field, just make contact with it. Put the ball in play. Now, all that has to happen is a force at home for the out. And I think that's all you worry about. Swing. And now Palmer has Scharfenberg in a one-two hole. And we'll see what she dials up here. A strikeout would be absolutely huge here. Palmer pitching her heart out. Bases juiced. One out. Top six. No score. Pitch, change up. Aha, what a job by Scharfenberg to get a piece of that one. I I was getting ready to call swing and a miss, and Scharfenberg gets a piece. Nice piece of hitting to stay alive there. Count will stay at a ball and two strikes. One out. You can cut the tension with a knife. Pitch, low and away, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. What a game. What an absolute great softball game. The best one of the year I've called. Pitch. That ball is lined into center field. And now they overthrow on the cutoff, and that's going to score a run. Oh, Scharfenberg. I tell you, they thought they may have had a double play there. 
unfortunate set of circumstances for Bayside, but I tell you what, Rockland scores a run there on the throw over to third, and they take a one nothing lead. That was a good, that was a great hit by Scharfenberg to make contact and get the ball out. The situation was the runner at third came to, she thought it was gone and started to come home. Strike one. So she wouldn't have scored, but the ball thrown in from the center fielder to the third baseman to try to double her up, one over the head, allowing the runner from third to score. That'll be high and outside for a ball. And I'll tell you what, Palmer bringing some extra heat right now. Matty Navarro, the left-handed swinging catcher. Navarro, pitch, fouled back to the screen. And that'll be strike one, two balls and a strike. Two outs, though. Look, it was an outstanding play by the center fielder. She tracked nicely on it. It was line drive, Isabella Ramundi, but. I think her eyes got big when she saw the runner was off the bag. But it leads to a run, and when you put base runners on, that ball is popped straight up. Third baseman calls for it, has it, hauls it in. That'll end the inning, but not before. The Rockledge Raiders break a scoreless tie with one run on. Two hits, one error, two left. We head to the bottom of the sixth, one nothing. Rockledge on top. I want to give a special shout out to, to uh, Scharfenberg there. I mean, she battled at the dish and eventually put that ball into center field. And even though it wasn't a hit, she got it out there where they had to make a play on it. They did. So a good piece of hitting by the freshman, Lauren Scharfenberg. And I tell you, Scharfenberg, that was impressive. All right, Kyla Berry's job now to make this one run stand up. Can she do it? She'll start off facing Emily Gary. Bottom six, one nothing, Rockledge. Pitch. Low for a ball, one and zero. Oh. And Caleb, you know, it's funny because you say the leadoff runner scores 65 to 75 percent of the time, and walks will kill you. Well, there you have it. Barry's one and zero, oh, and the count will move to a ball and a strike. One and one now. Coming up after the game tonight, I'll be uh, a little bit later on. I'll be going live one on one with Coach Darren Bolton of the Satellite Scorpions. We're going to talk about the new beach volleyball courts that have gotten the go-ahead approval. Pitch. High and outside for a ball. And also going to pop on a little bit later tonight with my man Hunter Steele. We're going to tell you about something new and exciting that uh, happened to Brevard Sports Network today. We are now part of the Spotify and Apple family. Two balls and a strike to Gary. Pitch, change up, and it's a pretty one. And the count is even at two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Two 
to and to Barry. Change up. Gobbled up and out. Good play by the second baseman. Jenna Garza. And that'll bring up top of the lineup with Karis Platt. So unless Bayside can get some runs, Thomas Brady says that one run, that's all Kylie needed. Here's the pitch. She squares the bunt and pulls the bat back. Ball one, one and zero. Oh. On deck is Brooke Lemke. Here's Platt, Kyla Berry, one and zero, oh, one out. Bottom six. Here's the pitch. Change up is outside for ball two. Two and O oh to the batter. Karras held up on slapping that one, and the count is three and O. Oh. Needing base runners, I got to think you're taking two here. Barry toes the rubber. She'll wind and fire. That'll be strike one. You might be ready now, but I think you take another. I think you take another here. one nothing. Rockledge on top. One out, bottom six. Pitch, and she'll walk. And that's going to bring up number 25, Autumn Medina, as a pinch hitter. Medina steps in. She's batting 200 on the year. Medina. One out here. Medina, her first look at Kyla Berry. The pitch from Berry. Medina squares the bunt. And it's high for a ball. So five of the last six, seven pitches Berry's thrown have been balls here. Don't think she's laboring. Just think she's a little late in her release. One and oh, pitch. That's a strike. One and one. Medina, Barry, one and one. That's strike two. Medina pulled the bat back on that one, and it's a ball and two, or a one ball and two strikes now. One out. The runner at first is Kyrus Platt. Platt reached on a walk. Pitch. Strike three called. That'll be the second out of the inning. And that's going to bring up Brooke Lemke. No, I'm sorry, Brooke Mahaney. Brooke Mahaney. Brooke Mahaney is up. Mahaney's got two home runs this year, so she's certainly capable of giving one a ride. But the key to that would be to be able to get around on a Kyla Berry fastball. Berry no longer change up, falls in for strike one. Oh, and one to Mahini. You hate to see a loser in a game like this, that's for sure. Here's the pitch, 
That's a slapper to the shortstop. Emily Thomas just eats those things up, and she does it there for the third and final out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. We head to the top of the seventh inning. Rockledge on top, one nothing. All right, Sid Palmer back in the circle. Uh, you know, we, both of these pitchers tonight have just done an outstanding job. And I'll tell you what. Well, again, we said, you know, you, you hate to see any one team lose this game, but that's the way it is in life. And right now, the Raiders stand to benefit off of good base running, smart base running, and... Uh, Battling at the plate as Lauren Scharfenberg did. Stepping in now is going to be Kaylee Bowles. Rockledge has just done an outstanding job in the field tonight, feeling their positions well. And when you can do those three things, when you can pitch, and that ball is looped to the shortstop, short hop up and over to first. I tell you, you, I, I, you just couldn't be more impressed with the play uh, of the shortstop for both of these teams. Uh, that play made by Emily Gary there. And Gary just let that ball drop. She didn't try to make an outstanding play on it in terms of a diving catch. She let it come to her and then let the arm do the work. This is Erica Perez. Pitch high for a ball, 1-0. Right now, that's my player of the game, Caleb. Lauren Scharfenberg. Make contact on that. The battle, the way she did at the plate. Plus, she got a hit in the first inning, too. I, I get it, it's an infield hit, but it's a hit. And uh, Scharfenberg. Change up. Nice job of the catcher to frame it, but the plate umpire wasn't buying it. Two and one. And, of course, uh, well, Kyla Berry as well. Berry pitches a shutout. You always got to bring the pitcher in on that. That'll be high for ball three, three and one. Pitch, ball four. So a one out walk to Perez. We'll bring in a pinch hitter now and that pinch hitter is Hannah Briggs, Hannah Briggs, a senior, comes in batting 250 on the year. Briggs has got nine RBIs, two doubles. She's got seven hits and 28 official at-bats. Runner at first, one out, top seven pitch. Swing and a miss by Briggs for strike one. The 0 one from Palmer. That ball is nice job. A back to first. Can they get her? No, but the ball gets away. Nice job backing up by the right fielder over to second. And she'll slide in. The ball hit off the back of her helmet, but... Good job by the third baseman there to uh, make that play. Brooke Mahaney, and it's two outs on the line drive stab. And that's going to bring up Addie Berry back to the top of the lineup.
Runner at second, two outs, Addie Berry. First pitch, she's a slap hitter for sure. She is an expert at it. Works with, works with, worked with in the offseason. Ironically, Jeff Shepard with the Melbourne Bulldogs next week right here on the Brevard Sports Network. Coming up Wednesday, the game of the year in softball, Melbourne and Rockledge. Next Wednesday, I'll be on the call for that one. Caleb will be right there at Melbourne with me, but he'll be over doing district girls lacrosse. Two balls, no strikes. There's a slapper to the first baseman. Nobody's covering, and Barry's. They got Erica Perez in a pickle, and they run right at her, drops the ball, and they tag her a second time and get her. Boy, that was just weird, but it works out for an out for Bayside. The ball came out of the glove. Sid Palmer was there to pick it up, and that'll be the third and final out of the inning. Rockledge nearly made it 2 nothing, but they don't. And Bayside, final at bat here. No runs, one hit, no errors. Well, actually one error because they advanced the base runner. One left. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. One to nothing, Rockledge. All right, Ken Kyla Berry, close it out here. I saw a comment on there that said she only needed one run. We're about to find out if that is indeed the case. For the Bayside Bears, this would be their third loss in a row. They fell, they fell to Melbourne and fell to Space Coast. Coming up next for Bayside will be Gateway, O'Galley, Coco, at Liberty, and then Space Coast. So their schedule gets stays tough the rest of the season. For the Rockledge Raiders, who are looking for their 15th win of the year. Uh, they've got Coco at Melbourne, Space Coast, and at Liberty. So they, too, have a tough schedule the rest of the way. Nothing easy here as you get set to head into districts at the end of the year. But uh, coming up, you couldn't ask for Amani Johnson, the number four hitter. Amani Johnson, Sid Palmer, and Allie Walter, the batters. As Kyla Berry looks to finish off for another win on the season for her. If Barry can pick it up, it'll be her eighth win of the year. She's got 28 career wins for the Raiders. And Barry's first pitch offering to Amani Johnson is high for a ball. One and O oh to Johnson. Johnson came into the game batting 250. Barry, the 1 0. Oh. Swing and a miss. Strike one. One and one. Manager Scott Thomas comes out to the mound. He wants a word with Barry before the next pitch. Something he just didn't like or didn't feel right about. Or sometimes you just feel like you, you just got to say it. You understand that, don't you, Caleb? <laughs> He's not changing pitchers, is he? Nah. I was just thinking. We've seen the Barry sisters finish games for each other. They combined for a no-hitter earlier this year. Kyla Barry and Addie Barry did. But, no, he just had something he wanted to say and said it. And So, Kyla, one and one now to Amante Johnson, who's just been outstanding at first base today. Pitch, swing, and a miss. Strike two. One and two now to Johnson. Barry. Johnson. Strike three. Balls drop, but it doesn't matter. She doesn't didn't see it fall. And 
That'll be the first out of the inning, and that's going to bring up Sid Palmer. If ever there was a time to help your cause, it is most certainly right now. Oh, Emily's not playing. Who is that over there at shortstop? That's right, Lauren Garvey. My apologies. I keep saying Emily. I'm so used to Emily being over there. Lauren Garvey. Ah, my bad. Thank you, Kendall, for, for bringing that up. Thank you. I said Emily Thomas. Lauren Garvey's done an outstanding job over there. My bad. Please forgive me. Swing or no swing. My bad, my bad. Two balls and no strikes. I apologize to the Garvey family. She has made some good plays over there at shortstop today. A pitch, swing, and a miss. Strike one, two balls and a strike. <laughs> In fact, when I went around the infield, I just automatically assumed it. Pitch, change up, drops in four, strike two, and the count is now two and two with one out. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Pitcher to pitcher, change up outside. The count will be full at three and two. The on deck hitter is Allie Walter, the catcher. Barry to Palmer. The pitch. That'll be ball four, and the Bears have the tying run on board. The winning run is at the plate in the form of Allie Walter. Walter came into today's game a 250 hitter, 13 RBIs, though. Allie Walter to face Kyla Berry, and the pinch runner is Kayla Placeris. Kayla Placeris is in. Once again, we apologize. Low signal area here in Brevard County. We weren't able to get the scoreboard up tonight because we weren't able to, to load the app that works both our bottom banner ads and our scoreboard. That ball is hit deep in the left field. It's off the wall. Placeris the third, stopping at second with a one-out double is Allie Walter, and she came about three feet away from a walk-off home run. And we have some good old-fashioned drama. Runners now at second and third with one out. The batter. is Christina Van Cleve. Allie Walter absolutely jumped all over that fastball and drilled it off the wall. I know the players got excited and came out for that one. They're going to put on Van Cleve to load the bases, much like Rockledge did. And now we're going to get a pinch hitter and Brooke Chartland up. Chartland's a 286 hitter. Her first RBI of the year 
would be a game tire. Can she do what Lauren Scharfenberg did for Rockledge? And that is just get the ball on the ground or make contact. Actually, nope, we're going to get another hitter. This is going to be number 16. This is actually going to be Isabella Ramundi. The player that I just mentioned is on deck. We're actually now pulled off the on-deck circle. So. so this is going to be Ramundi. Forget everything I just said. Sherry Williams says, I think I hear my daughter screaming. I know you hear a bunch of them screaming for sure. And with just calls, bases loaded, one out, Ramundi, Barry, one nothing Rockledge, bottom seventh, base hit, likely wins it. For sure ties it. Barry outside for a ball. One and O. Oh. One and O. Oh. pitch swing and a miss strike one the infield is in for Rockledge and well why not all they need is a force Bowles Garvey on the left side Garza and Nelson on the right low ball two two and one now a walk ties it up. One nothing. Rockledge. Bases loaded. Bottom seventh. One out. Two one. Ramundi. Barry in the circle. Pitch. Strike two. Right down. I ninety five. And the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Barry battling. Ramundi got to swing the stick. Here's the pitch. Not sure how she looked at that, but she did, and that is three and two. Good eye. The count is full. This is the payoff pitch here. And I'll tell you what. Matty Navarro says, no, 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 no. Let me talk to my pitcher. I don't I don't need the entire infield. Navarro goes out. Just letting her know, you got this. You got this. You've been here. You've, you, you've won these situations. And Ramundi talking to her teammate on deck. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Bases loaded. Rockledge up one nothing. Barry toes the rubber. Rocks, fires, there's a shot to the third base, but she bobbled at the throw. They got her. Outstanding play on the force. Didn't need the tag. The ball was bobbled. She still was able to recover in time. Kaylee Bells with a great play and a great play by Navarro to touch the bag. But that's just two outs. The bases are still loaded and still an opportunity. Emily Gary steps in. The, the intentional walk to load the bases is the call that made that. Because all you need, if she had to put the tag on, she'd have been safe. But all she needed to do was step on the plate. Base is still loaded. Two outs now. Gary and Barry. Barry winds and fires. Swing and a miss. Strike one. The pitch. Called that a ball. One ball. One strike. Two outs. Bases are loaded. <laughs> she, she's like, where is it missing?
One and one, two outs. Barry winds, fires. Gary watches ball two, and it's two and one. Emily Gary, Kyla Barry, one on one here. Pitch. Change up is hit. And to the shortstop over to first. The ball gets away. And Bayside is going to walk it off and win the game 2-1. to one. The Bayside Bears have walked off a 2-1 to one victory. Emily Gary with a shot to the shortstop. And the Bears beat the Raiders. Two to one. What a game. Outstanding softball game tonight. As I said, nobody deserves to lose it. But there is a winner and loser. And the winner is the Bayside Bears who bounce back after two losses to two of the area's better teams, Melbourne and Space Coast, to upset, really, the number two team in the area, the Rockledge Raiders. Your final score, the Bayside Bears in walk-off fashion defeat the Rockledge Raiders. Your winning pitcher tonight from the Bayside Bears, Sid Palmer. Your loser, Kyla Berry. We'll see you tomorrow morning from Satellite High School for the 2021 Cape Coast Conference Track and Field Championships. For Caleb Brown, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network. Once again, the final score, Rockledge Raiders fall to the Bayside Bears. Bayside 2, Rockledge 1.